Back to the Millenni Trash this episode, but not from America this time, from a little closer to home instead. We're looking at Dead Creatures, this is a 2001 straight-to-video horror drama from the UK, directed by Andrew Parkinson. This is his second feature after I, Zombie, which looks like it has its fans. And then it looks like Parkinson's mainly done editing work on other schlocky horror films and stuff for the BBC. The film stars a bunch of unknowns, really. Nobody that really stood out to me. There's uh, Antonia Beamish, who was in The Last Horror Movie, a film that Tartan put out and I've had since I was a teenager. And then there's uh, Bart Ruspoli. Needed to check that one because I keep forgetting his name. Bart Ruspoli, who produced the Stephen Gray film Boiling Point not too long ago, and uh, the popular TV show Band of Brothers. That's about it for people I recognised or people that are worth mentioning from this. Unless I've missed someone, let me know if I have. So, be interested in seeing some Milani trash from the UK. There's nothing about this online again. This is another really obscure one, so no idea what we're in for here. Let's have a look. Oh man, enough. For God's sake, that's enough. Please. Go. You haven't told me anything. I've told you everything, everything that I know. What happened to you? The plot follows a group of girls living together in a flat in London. They've chosen to live together because they all suffer from the same infection, uh, transmitted the same way as a vampire does, through bites. It turns them into cannibals and also slowly deteriorates them. So they live together, trying to survive, trying to find food, they find another member of the group, they lose a member of the group, all the while trying to avoid a cannibal hunter who's going around killing the cannibals, trying to figure out what happened to his daughter. I'm not going to lie, I was quite into this for the first half an hour. It, it wasn't too bad. Unfortunately though, as it goes along, its premise kind of wears a little bit thin. It's almost as if they sort of had this great initial idea and then stretched it into a full hour and a half feature. And it, it really does wear thin, and I was really struggling with that last half an hour. It's not without its highlights, it's just a little unrefined. My name is Reese. I'm going to kill you. Let's get it over with. Uh... Anne was on form as always. Hogged all the dope. And told one of her famous shagging stories. <laughs> She's so outrageous. I'm sure after all this time, Fran still doesn't know what to make of her. We're waiting. It was just the wrong colour. <laughs> he was a white bloke. Yeah. Then his dick was sort of brownish. Uh, brownish, but not big. The acting ranges from terrible to sort of passable, really. It has a bit of a 90s live-action kids show energy, you know, like uh, The Queen's Nose or something like that. Dips into the melodrama more often than you'd think. Um, it was kind of weird as well, hearing British accents for a change. We've heard a lot of American and the odd bit of Australian, so seeing something with British accents in this collection was a little jarring, I'm not gonna lie, not gonna lie. The characters are all kind of a bit too similar, to be honest. They've all got a quirk, sure, but for the most part they all do the same thing. They're just whinging about the plight and moping about being miserable for most of it. The gore. Now this is the highlight, I'd say, the standout of this film, the gore. There's plenty of it, all practical, and it's pretty well done for the most part, you know. There is way more cannibalism in this film than in any of the Italian films that we've watched in this collection so far. So, if you want in the gore, this is a pretty good one for it, to be honest. And there's some fun ways that people get killed as well. Obviously there's a lot of cannibalism, but one that really stands out is the cannibal hunter. He's got like a rod gun, uh, used for killing cows, I think, in slaughterhouses. 
um, shoots through people's heads. And you know what? It's a decent low budget effect. It's pretty good. So we've talked about the gore, what else we usually talk about is the sleazy aspect. And funnily enough, there isn't really one to this. There's one scene of nudity and that's it. So on top of being a bit put out by the fact that everyone's talking in a British accent, it was also weird to see that all the characters pretty much kept the clothes on for the entire film. It's shot relatively well, looks nice, it's competently made. Uh, the music is a little stock sounding, which can be a bit jarring here and there. Uh, but it, for the most part, it just sort of disappears into the film, really. It's just sort of nondescript. Um, the sets are all really cool, though. Uh, it's definitely got a British feel, like the flats. The high streets as well, they're all very British. And this is something that was kind of fun when watching the film, was looking at the high streets, the shops that were around in the early 2000s that we don't have anymore. Um, and then there were other aspects to it as well, like there's a scene where one of the characters are flicking through an Argos catalogue and one that really made me laugh was it just stops on an advert outside a shop um, and it's just got Alan Titchmarsh's face and it just sort of lingers on him for a bit. Quite funny, but quite nostalgic as well. It was definitely one of the things I enjoyed the most about the film. So at the beginning I referred to this film as Millenni Trash and I wasn't quite misleading with that but I'd say that this only just fits into the category of Millenni Trash. It's quite different to a lot of the ones we've seen in the past, especially on this label. Um, it's missing quite a few of the tropes that you'd think. Uh, things like the uh, over-the-top crazy editing, the goth metal soundtrack, or the uh, bizarre transitional effects that are just slapped in all over the place. I don't even think it's shot on digital, actually. This looks like it's shot on film. But it was made back end of the 2000s, released in 2001, and it does have some similarities. So I'd say that it just makes the cut. Because what we do get in this film is angst. Tons and tons of angst, pontificating, moping, self-harm, and just a general awe of bleakness. And I'd say because of this, it, it just makes the cut. It does feel quite millennial trash in its dialogue. I'd say anyway. It's a bit of an odd one though this film to be honest because it's more of a drama I'd say than a horror film. Um, it feels almost like a soap opera or a kitchen sink drama for a lot of its runtime. Now on the back it compares this film to Ken Loach and Mike Lee and I'm not gonna lie when I first read that I scoffed at the idea. I quite like these guys as films. Um, Ken Loach and Mike Lee, big fan, and I thought, as if that's going to match up to their, those guys. And you know what? It doesn't quite match their level, but I can see the comparison. It has this sort of just sense of like hopelessness and despair that obviously Lee and Loach are like masters of. And it, it does do it relatively well, but obviously Mike Lee, Ken Loach, they can tell an engaging and emotional story through the bleakness, whereas this film just feels like it's treading water for the last hour and it just runs out of ideas. Now, we are going to move on, but it might not be where you think we're going. I don't have any friends. I don't have any friends. No, I don't suppose you do. So there is also a short film on this disc, and I thought, let's take a look at it properly, shall we? It's called Sad Man, and it's from 1993, and it's also directed by Andrew Parkinson. 
apparently. Now, I've said about a few of these films that there's not much information about them online, and usually that means that there's a pretty vague IMDb page at, pu at a push, like there's like a tiny Wikipedia article about them, and a letterboxed page, and that's usually about it. This film has none of that. It, I couldn't find any information about this online at all. I can't believe I've actually seen a film that doesn't have an IMDb page. It's crazy. I might be the only person who's watched this film because there's just no evidence that it exists apart from the fact that it's on this disc. So what's it about? Well, it's about a sad man. He gets off the train, makes his way to an abandoned shack uh, where there's a dead crow on a plate. He eats the crow, freaks out and vanishes. You know what, I quite liked this. It's four minutes long and it's short and sweet and it just had a vibe that I liked. Um, it, it shot at a strange frame rate and I think it's trying to emulate pixelation, which for those who don't know, pixelation is stop motion animation but with live action actors. Um, and it's trying to emulate that so it's quite a jarring frame rate. But you know what, I liked the weird style, I liked the vagueness, I liked the dead crow, I liked the freak out bit. It was fun. I like short films quite a lot though, especially experimental ones, so this just sort of scratched a little itch for me. And this is quite high praise coming from me, but it did kind of remind me of like a Schwankmeyer short. It's not to his calibre, but if I'm reminded of Schwankmeyer, you've done a pretty good job I'd say. So yeah, pretty good, surprisingly decent. Right, let's talk about the print. It's not too bad, to be honest. Uh, it's full screen, it's clear, uh, colours work, and there's not really many issues that I noticed. The sound's pretty good, although every now and then it does get a little distorted, but I'm guessing that's more to do with how it was recorded. It's a lot of like exterior shots and the sound's just a little muffled or clips the mic a bit. And I think it's more to do with how it was recorded than the transfer. Uh, also, there is a little flicker running along the bottom for most of the film, but it's it, it's not that bad to be honest. Out of what we've seen in this collection, it's sort of top middle, you know. It's not too bad. And on the disc, outside of the feature and the short film, we get the usual stuff, you know, chapter select stills, filmographies, trailer for this film, and the more hardcore trailers. But we also get a 20 minute long behind the scenes documentary, outtakes, a full feature length commentary and a 15 minute featurette about the release of the film, the first premiere of the film. You know what, I'm impressed. I am very, very impressed. It's beating out a lot of the shameless Blu-rays we've seen recently with special features. It's definitely the best we've seen in the collection for quite a while, so yeah, wow, not bad at all. And it's time for the case. Uh, not the worst looking of these hardcore DVDs. It's just a little boring, I guess. It doesn't really stand out in any way. All the information seems right though, including the runtime, which is nice. Font's not too bad either. Yeah, it's just, it's not terrible. It's just serviceably dull, I guess. We also get a Poundland leaflet with this one, uh, one we've seen a few times before, but what's worth mentioning here is that the, the texture of the paper is weird. Uh, you can't really tell in this video, obviously, but they usually use like a smooth glossy paper, and this one feels matte and a bit rough. Very odd. Overall then, it's got an interesting idea and a completely different feel to all the other films we've covered in this collection so far, but unfortunately it runs out of steam a little too quickly, and it can be quite dull. The gore's decent though, 
and it is quite fun looking at uh, early noughties UK quite nostalgic um, so yeah it's a bit of a mixed bag sure but I'd say that this gets a light recommendation from me I'd say it's for those who have seen something in this review that's piqued their interest somewhat if you've watched this review and thought that looks absolutely terrible then it's probably not for you. To be honest, I don't really think it was for me, really. But there were just a few things in there that intrigued me and I didn't hate it, I didn't hate it. So, if you're in the market for this, uh, this print is pretty damn good as well. There's plenty of stuff on the disc, that that short film's probably worth your time as well. And it's only going for a couple of quid online. Um, so if you are wanting to pick it up, this is a pretty good way to go. There is a street collection version, obviously, as there always is, and there's a couple of imports, but honestly, it's probably not worth the effort importing, especially when this version's fine, and I doubt the print's any different on those either. Yeah, not bad, really, not bad. So, yeah, surprisingly, not the worst. It's not good, but it's not the worst that we've seen on here. And hopefully we're going to keep the decent going, or the slightly good anyway that's all i can ask for with this label at the moment really isn't it i just don't want it to be shit <laughs> but who knows with this next one because next episode we're going to be checking out first